Uh, okay, what's up everyone? Goldie here. Uh, happy getaway day on Thursday. Getaway day number two, I suppose. Um, short main here today, uh, starting early. And we've had two games actually canceled. So uh, the Miami and the Mets game, um, that was postponed, as was the Cincy and Philly game. Not unfortunately going to get... Um, Hunter Green actually threw yesterday, so uh, this is who they had announced. But these games were literally postponed yesterday, and, and uh, DK already had their um, their slate files up. They just haven't adjusted them, as did MLB. Um, these were the original announced starters. Nevertheless, uh, those two games not on the slate. We can't ignore them, and we just have the four-gamer. Um, so hopefully today we can go through this one quickly. Uh, Boston and Detroit, we've got uh, Sale and Turnbull on the mound. Oof, uh, we'll get into it. Uh, but th these guys were a disaster in their first start. Uh, Toronto and KC, Kevin Gosman, Jordan Lyles, both of these guys serviceable in their first starts. Um, eh, Lyles may have gotten beat up a little bit. I don't know. Lyles gets beat up all the time. San Francisco and the, and the White Sox, Alex, Alex Wood making his first appearance of the season. Lance Lynn going in his second. Uh, he's been... He's been geared up for a while. He threw in the classic, of course. And then we have um, sort of the, the first uh, purple and, and, and black and, and maybe even red, white, and blue colored elephant in the room. Uh, first game at Coors Field this year. And JoJo Gray is bad. He's on the barrel. So you're going to see a lot of chalk on the Rockies here today. Not so much on Kyle Freeland, of course, because he gets a – a little bit of a pesky lineup uh, uh, on the other side with Washington. So, um, some some definite like super obvious spots, right? We're gonna want to get to Colorado for sure. Maybe we're gonna be able to differentiate uh, in in some other places. Uh, we'll get into the games here in a sec. So we do have the projections and the ownership pushed to the site. Um, I just uploaded those a few minutes ago so they should be there definitely by the time you guys uh see this vid um we'll have updates once again throughout the morning until the early afternoon and we get lock um we should have lineups for everybody everybody's usually been pretty good as a matter of fact with lineups so far but we're starting to get to the point where guys are starting to get hurt for example in in chicago over here over here, uh, Eloy Jimenez tweaked a hammy. Um, you know, not that that's going to affect the lineup. The the White Sox have already brought up Jake Berger uh, to the active roster. Um, but just a, a an illustration, guys. You know, through the first week of the season, um, they're they're starting to uh. You know, we're starting to get into the real baseball here, uh, where we got to manage injuries and and late lineups and uh, all this kind of jazz. So keep an eye out for this. Hopefully, we get uh, Washington and Colorado to uh, release their stuff. They're normally pretty good um, about releasing a lineup on time. Occasionally, Buddy Black over here in Colorado uh, jacks around and 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 releases something, but it's usually only uh, if somebody is dealing with a some sort of injury so it everybody healthy for the most part um to my recollection down here with these guys so we shouldn't really have a problem uh waiting but uh these first few games may i mean they'll definitely be nearly over at least the the latter two toronto kc san francisco and the white Sox. by the time that this coors game starts uh the boston detroit game will almost certainly be over uh, because i don't think i mean we've had maybe 20% of the game, 30% of the games last a full three hours um, here in the early part of the season. So uh, in any case, pitch clock working. Uh, they wanted to speed up games, and you know it's uh, it's serving its purpose so far. Um, that said, we'll uh, let's just get into the games here. I mean, we can, you know, since we've got a a little bit of time here this morning, um, we can kind of go over. Just get our bearings a little bit of who we've got price-wise on the mound uh, and how the projections are, are really f fleshing out here in the early going. Uh, Kevin Gosman, 9,000 here on DK. Um, getting Kansas City, 
Now, we don't really have much to speak of in the way of, of weather concerns. Uh, in Chicago, we do have uh, a pretty hefty wind blowing out. But um, everywhere else, at least temp-wise, uh, it seems to be pretty mild and about 50, 55 degrees pretty much everywhere um, around baseball today. So nothing, to, you know, super, t- it's not 95 degrees at, at Coors Field, for example, where you just like have to lock in Coors and, you know, hope you uh, <laughs> you differentiate well enough. Um, so not terribly attackable. That means we can spread out a little uh, in terms of uh, weather, and you can spread out and, and, and get to some other guys in some of these other games because we still have attackable arms. You know, Jordan, Jordan Lyles is attackable. Uh, Chris Sale, was, as, as I alluded to, he was a disaster zone in, in his first start. So was Spencer Turnbull. So you can attack those guys. Alex Wood, a little bit of a susceptibility to right-handers. Uh, obviously, the White, White Sox very right-handed heavy. Um, but that doesn't mean that you just outright fade those two guys, those two being Alex Wood and Jordan Lyles, for example. Um, you know, certainly Chris Sale has the swing and miss, and that's why we're seeing a lot of ownership on him in the early going here. Uh, based on the projection, it looks a little bit stiff to me in the early. I don't trust this guy, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, now, that could... Uh, it doesn't mean I'm right, you know. Um, that could definitely blow up in my face, make me look like an idiot. But that said, the a median projection here of, of a full 18 points when he hasn't been able to throw it over the freaking plate yet, um, yeah, maybe we're getting a little carried away. Nevertheless, seeing a lot of ownership, should he be in half of your teams today? I don't know. Seems a little aggressive. So I think we could maybe differentiate, play some Alex Wood if you want. I think this is a fine spot. He is Excellent against left-handers. Not going to be many lefties in the lineup for the White Sox, but um, you know we'll get into the numbers here in a bit. A uh, couple of guys that you almost definitely w- just want to avoid are Spencer Turnbull. Um, now, if, this is a four-game slate, okay? Don't get me wrong. You could play literally everybody in some capacity. Um, so if, if some of these guys outperform these projections... Don't be surprised here. It's a four-game slate, and if they're on a winning tournament team with 13 DK points, don't be shocked if if Spencer Turnbull survives and bounces a little bit from his uh, sort of egregious outing in his first start. Same thing with Chris Sale. Uh, but don't be surprised if he puts up 14 points, gives up three runs and two dingers again against Detroit. You know, so a lot of variance still uh, here on a four-game slate. And so we don't have to just lock in Gosman and Lance Lynn and or Gosman and Sale or anything and just uh, and run with everybody at Coors. Um, we're going to have to get different because Coors is going to be very, very popular. Initial runs were showing about 40% ownership on them. So um, that said, you got to still make some de- decisions here today. And hopefully we can, by going through these games we can uncover a, a little bit of value here. So let's start at the top with Toronto. Uh, eh, maybe we'll just get to Boston, Kansas City first. Here's Sale. Um, the VLO is still respectable there at uh, at 95, but he has not been able to spot it just yet. Of course, just minuscule sample here so far, but he got torched. Um, gave up three homers, I believe. Still a little bit of swing and miss, but uh, the swinging strike rate itself not really up at the 13% that we used to see sale. Um, it, his CSW is so high at 33.5% here, mostly because of the called strikes. That's because he's always been very difficult to pick up the baseball from out of the hand, right? So that's where a lot of the strikeouts are, are coming from still. And Detroit is definitely going to strike out. This is their lineup from yesterday. They had uh, Nick Maton, Riley Green has actually had a really good start to the season here. Um Good price for him, but hits from the left side. We don't want lefties against Sale. We never have. Um, of course, in the early going, two and a third innings, you know, he's sent, seen ten hitters. So we can't we can't take any stock in in these numbers whatsoever, or even those against righties. So um, that said, at fifty percent ownership, I think I personally want to take a, a bit of a wait and see approach with Sale. I don't like jacking around with guys 
that are coming off of injuries, similar with Spencer Turnbull down here, um, and when they haven't pitched at this level in a long time. And Sale definitely qualifies in that regard. So um, this ownership, while he does have a strikeout rate, and he's Chris Sale, and he gets Detroit, um, I'm probably, you know, I'm not building a bunch of teams today. But uh, I will, if I were, I would come in underweight of this 50%. And this median projection thus far looks a, a tick high to me. I think, you know, 15 and a half, 16, as in a median projection, probably looks a bit more respectable. So, um, you know, that said, if you're building teams, I wouldn't go in here and just nuke things. But you can cap your ownership a little bit or force in, if you're using SaberSim to build, force in some more contrarian stacks. And that will naturally uh, reduce, um, or not contrarian stacks, uh, chalky stacks, I mean. Um, that will naturally reduce some of your Chris Sale ownership uh, if you if you get balanced, um, you know, in the uh, in the hitter category. So that said, um, I'm still going to take a, a wait and see approach with him. He's got the stuff. So if we if he pops here against Detroit, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But Detroit's been a little bit sticky, certainly in their in their series against the Astros. Um, they made it kind of difficult on some pretty good arms down there for the Strohs. Luis Garcia, uh, who threw yesterday. Christian Javier, um, and of course Hunter Brown, you know, so they, they made it a little bit difficult on these guys, and, you know, they're, they're still going to strike out a lot. Last year, split adjusted against lefties, 25% K rate, created just a 74 clip with a buck 12 ISO, 269 Woba, so naturally pretty bad, and they're going to be pretty bad once again, but in the early going here, they have been uh, a little bit pesky. Um, Riley Green, as I mentioned in particular, 3,700. I don't want to play him, but he's had a good start to the season. Torque is probably one of the better plays here um, in terms of you know price adjusted value. We are showing him you know two two and a half point per dollar, give or take so far, which is uh you know could be worse I suppose. Um, he's going to strike out a lot in this matchup I think, but he's got by far the most power here. Um, you know, for the Tigers, probably see Javi Baez back in the list. Of course, we can we can get to sale with some righties there as well, but he's going to strike out a ton also. Um, so I wouldn't go crazy with getting to the Tigers here, but they're not going to be played. Nobody is playing them. And if you want to just take shots on uh, sale just being bad once again, I think that's I think it's fine. It's four game slate. You can do whatever you want. On the other side, Turnbull, same sort of deal. I'm not messing with him. 5,900 uh, against Boston, who has actually been pretty respectable themselves. Um, a little bit more ownership on Boston, but not crazy here. If you want to pivot, I think Boston is a good option. Uh, in Detroit, the ballpark is a little bit larger, and it it really neutralizes right-handed power. So I would like to get to some of the lefties, but... Turnbull is going to be as bad as he was in his first start. doesn't really matter who you play, lefty or righty. So all of these guys, uh, definitely gettable price-wise. Um, Verdugo, 4,600. He's probably just going to hover here because he gets a lot of at-bats when they lead him off against righties. And they're going to see a lot of righties this year, naturally, right? Rafi Devers, 6,000, of course. You can always play Rafi. He's going to see some ownership for sure, about 30% so far. Um, really not a ton of value on Justin Turner at 4,200. He's just going to be kind of a, a cog in the middle of the lineup that's not going to strike out. And hopefully Verdugo and Devers can get on base ahead of him. Justin Turner is still going to put the baseball in play. And this is a decent price for him. On a four-game slate, you can consider. Unfortunately, you have to play him just at first base. And we don't really want to be playing around with that necessarily. But... Um, you know, so that makes it a little difficult, but he's he's fine if you want to stack him. Matsutake Yoshida at 4,900. Uh, we're getting crazy here paying a, a, this kind of price for him. It, he's got some name recognition, and just because he's hit one dinger so far, I mean, doesn't mean I want to be paying 5K, 5K for a guy who is totally new to all of um, MLB pitching. That said, Spencer Turnbull, not necessarily, at least in the early going, an MLB pitcher. Okay, so we you can pay for him. It's fine. Tristan Costa is back down to 2,600, uh, like that too. So you can play him. I think I'd prefer getting to him 
uh, at first base, and nobody's going to play him either. You know, so uh, you can play some Boston, perfectly fine. Um, not sure if they'll run out Rymel Tapia again. He's just kind of a, a bench piece for them. But uh, some versatility, Yu Chang down here if you need a, a really cheap piece. Connor Wong behind the plate. Or uh, Reese McGuire. He'll probably get to start today in a day game after a night game. So um, some versatility here for, for the Red Sox. I think it's fine if you want to... You can full stack them and then mix in like a three-man Colorado if you want to do that. That's, that's fine. Uh, a lot of ways that you can go today. I would prefer getting to offense here and definitely just try and fade some of this Chris Sale ownership. I think the ownership is probably a little bit aggressive um, on average here. Okay, Toronto and Kansas City. Um, Gosman, I think I, I would much rather just pay for Gosman. Uh, pay the extra 1500 Find it and differentiate with the hitters and, and play Gosman against the Royals. Um, he doesn't walk anybody. He has impeccable control, doesn't give up a lot of power, and we have a, a large sample here. Like He went 90 in his first start. Again, really the only issue that we run to, into with Gosman in general uh, is not the stuff. Of course, we know he's got the killer splitter. Slider's not great, but he doesn't really need to use that a whole hell of a lot because he's got a good four-seamer and good split um, and, and great control. So he, he doesn't need to resort to uh, tertiary, quaternary sort of pitches in the arsenal because he doesn't he throws the first two pitches for strikes well enough um, and, and gets a lot of swing and miss on those two. So he doesn't, excuse me, have to... Um, really dig down deep into the uh, the quiver, so to speak, uh, for the slider all that often because he's not going to beat himself. First pitch strike rate of 68%. That's uh, fantastic. One of the better numbers in baseball. And a 28% aggregate K rate. So good suppression numbers here. But as I alluded to, the only issue we run into with Gosman is going terribly deep into games Averages just 90 a start, uh, 90 pitches per start, that is. Five and two-thirds, fine. Um, but we'd really like to see him punch through that, that full six-inning mark. And it's kind of hard to get there with Gosman a lot of times. So there's some variance still here with him, but at uh, a 19-point median projection here, uh, I think it's probably okay. 53% ownership initially. Perhaps a bit low, uh, to be quite honest. I like Osmond in this matchup. The Royals have not been good to start the season, and really only a couple of guys have popped, uh, despite a couple of good matchups already. So um, not really necessarily on the Royals, but you can play them for sure. They've got some lefties here that if you want to play the plus side of their split against Gosman, it's not necessarily the plus side of his split. Uh, he's a, a bit of a in terms of power and, and production, a bit of a reverse split. Gives up a little bit more to righties. But um, if you want to play some of the, the lefty Royals, like an MJ, uh, you want to play a Michael Massey, Pascantino at first base, that's fine. Uh, hits righties very, very well. Could always play Salvi, too, if you want to. Um, so they're, they're stackable, but definitely not a favorite play here for the Royals. You know, We can just kind of give you kind of a, a sneak peek of what the... Overall projections are looking like uh, for Kansas City. And in the early runs here, uh, we're waiting, we're waiting, and we've loaded. Uh, no ownership coming to really any of them here, including Jordan Lyles on the mound. We'll get to him in a sec. So um, very playable if you need to get super contrarian and, and just target a super popular pitcher. Not my favorite play, but uh, reasonable nevertheless on a four-game slate for sure. Um, okay, let's get back to – she is uh, stalling on me. Um, let's get back to the Royals here. Jordan Lyles on the mound, 7,000. This is a fine price for him, as a matter of fact. He's okay against righties, and Toronto's going to be very right-handed heavy. They've only got a couple of lefties that they're going to throw in the lineup, maybe a Brandon Belt today. 2,600, I believe, is the uh, price for him. And 2,400, he's getting – gotten a price drop. Uh, Dalton Varsho, 3,900, still a, a good number for him and very attainable. I think from the left side of the plate, that's really how we mostly want to attack 
uh, Jordan Lyles, 216 ISO allowed, full 270 average and a 356 Woba to lefties with an 088 ground ball to fly ball, 32-33% hard contact rate, slightly elevated with a full 1.7 homers per nine, pitches to a lot of contact against the lefties, and he's on the barrel in aggregate at over 10%. So worrisome for sure for Jordan Lyles, but at 7,000, he his plus side of the split is definitely against righties. He has some run suppression and, and production suppression capability here against the right side of the plate. They're going to hit for some average for sure, and that's worrisome when you go get Toronto, Springer, Vladdy, um, a couple of these guys at the top of the lineup that will not strike out. Bo Bichette will, but uh, hits righties perfectly fine. Um but it, it's not so much in the power department that, that Lyles really gives it up. It's a lot of singles and and pretty mediocre type of contact. Uh, neutral ground ball to fly ball, once again, it's because the slider is actually his, his most serviceable pitch, and he throws that a good bit against the right side. So four-seamer-sinker combo, really not very good. Changeup, not very good. Curveball, eh, serviceable as well. So... As we know with Jordan Lyles, he's just kind of a, a back-end type of starter anymore, but he's going to go out there, he's going to throw a lot of pitches for you, and at 7,000, if you want to get mega chalky with your hitters today, which I think is warranted to a certain extent, you can consider throwing in a Jordan Lyles as a tournament play. I wouldn't play him in cash, definitely not, because uh, we're worried about upside in general, but this is a four-game slate, and... If he's really got the slider biting, there's a couple of guys over here for Toronto that will strike out. Uh, as I mentioned, Bo Bichette, he strikes out a crap load. Um, Dalton Varsho will swing and miss a little bit. Matt Chapman strikes out. Okay, so um, some attackability here a little bit, and I think it's pretty sneaky for Jordan Lyles. If you want to throw him in some deeper tournament stuff, 7,000, this is really going to unlock a lot of the more expensive hitters. And at very low ownership today, nobody's going to be playing him. They probably shouldn't, but I think 5% is probably a bit low. Uh, a median projection seems fine to me. And value, he's not going to pop in these value metrics or anything, but on short slates in baseball, for sure, you got to figure out how to get contrarian, especially when you got a Coors game to worry about. So uh, the slider is serviceable enough for him, and if he's spotting the four-seamer, not going to throw the sinker against, against righties or the change, for that matter, uh, too much. But if he's spotting the four-seamer and really spinning the slider, he can actually eke out a, a pretty serviceable start here. And you may only need... 15, 18 points from your starting pitcher, and that's perfectly within range for Jordan Lyles. Really only a standard deviation or two, um, you know, outside of uh, his probably his median projection. So um, I think it's it's reasonable to get to Jordan Lyles, but I like Kevin Gosman for sure. And not a ton of offense here. If you want to stack them, go ahead. Uh, either side, I think it's, it's fine. It's four-game slate once again. But um, I think... I'd probably side with with Jordan Lyles here in tournaments from a uh, from an ownership perspective. Okay, let's move on. Um, San Francisco and the White Sox haven't gotten to see Alex Wood yet. Um, decent sinker, I mean respectable sinker, and big round ball rate from from Alex Wood relies on a slider heavily to lefties. He is elite against the left side of the plate. Really, really suppresses uh, all production in in pretty much every metric uh, huge ground ball to fly ball rate 2.6 ground ball to fly ball against the left side of the plate very low line drive rate as well no no hard contact to speak of at all 12 percent that's, that's an elite number with a full 22 percent soft contact rate to lefties uh, so you don't want any of the lefties against him uh, Chicago well good thing for them they don't really have any lefties um, the only one they've got is Andrew Benintendi he doesn't really strike out a lot but uh, he, like he'll strike out against lefties a little bit. Um, now this is their lineup from yesterday. They did have Gavin Sheets, uh, Yaz will hit from the the left side. He probably won't even catch today, um, with this being a day game after a night game. Oscar Colas might even not be in the outfield today. So they are missing, however. Uh, Eloy Jimenez, they did bring up Jake Berger. So Andrew Vaughn probably will come and, and start at first base. Maybe they'll DH Jake Berger or something like that. We'll see what they want to do. Um, Tim Anderson up here, 5,700. I, I do like him a little bit. I don't like the price uh, at all, but he 
is one of the better hitters, certainly a really, really good leadoff hitter, one of the better hitters in baseball. Um, his for a, a, a good bit of average, has pop, and has a lot of speed also. So if he gets on base and, you know, against a lefty, he can, he can steal third base here too. So um, they're going to be taking shots up here with Tim Anderson. 5,700, I think a lot of the value is priced out, but uh, you can get to him if you... Uh, have the money somehow and, and want to get kind of off the board. Uh, the price is going to keep his ownership down, you know, just at a, about 11% so far, um, you know, in the early runs. Luis Robert had a very good start to the season as well. 5,400, price is climbing a little bit, um, and he's going to see some ownership as well, 60 or 16% in the early going here. Um, I think this is a fine play, and with these two guys at the top of the lineup, really going to be able to turn it over and hopefully this season all of them can stay healthy i mean andrew bond down here he's got a lot of pop yohan Moncada uh, hits fine from the right side we want him a little bit more from the left side so 4800 not my favorite third base play of the day but uh he's playable in stacks for sure if you want to go after alex wood i'm not too crazy about it to be quite honest i think he's another interesting tournament play at, at reduced ownership here Seeing 19% on him right now, I think the projection is probably a little bit low. Now, we'll have to keep an eye on his pitch count, of course. Um, and we do have some weather concerns with a, a pretty stiff breeze blowing out to uh, left field here. So, naturally, that should play up right-handed power a little bit. Um, so, that would play into the hands of the, the White Sox uh, a little bit more against Alex Wood because he's... A little susceptible to the right side. 283 average, 347 Woba, 177 ISO with a 22% K rate and a 30% hard contact rate. Translates all to a 1.5 homers per 9 to righties. So definitely attackable with some right-handed power here a little bit. Uh, you're you're going to want guys that get to baseball in the air. And... Uh, Tim Anderson, unfortunately, that's not really him. Luis Robert, not so much either. So you're really looking at like a, an Andrew Vaughn or Jake Berger, something like that. I think a, a three-man from the White Sox is, is reasonable. Full stacks I'm not crazy about. Would probably rather side with Alex Wood, even though the strikeout matchup is generally not very good. He still has enough uh, to outperform a 22% strikeout rate. Uh, and, you know, this is a a perfectly fine spot for him. And at 19% ownership, do we want him in one in five teams? Yeah, I think that's probably probably fine. Decent tournament play. Not a ton of value to squeeze out in terms of the ownership, but the projection admittedly does look a, a little bit low here. So like Alex Wood uh, a little bit and maybe just some short stacks uh, for the White Sox. On the other side, Lance Lane, he's a horse. He's going to throw... As I mentioned, probably every start with him, he's going to throw 160 pitches if they let him. 8,400, not a ton of value at this price necessarily, but um, you know, in general for Lance Lynn. But he's got good strikeout stuff because he, he throws about 17 different types of fastball. Uh, and the Giants are going to strike out a lot, right? Still 24% against righties split adjusted last year. A little bit of power because these guys will hit the baseball in the air. Good prices for them. So if you want to attack a 40% ownership on, on Lance Lynn. Uh, I think that's perfectly fine, too. Really, nobody playing the Giants here, and they're playing in the same weather as as the White Sox. So um, a couple of these guys can definitely still get the ball in the air. Lance Lynn, really, really good against righties, 28% K rate. Neutral ground ball to fly ball, but will give up some hard contact. 32.5%, it's an elevated number, 33.5% in the hard contact department uh, to lefties as well. We generally want to attack Lance Lynn with the left side. Not going to hit for a ton of average, are they, at just a you know 250, give or take, but a 180 ISO. So he'll give it up a little bit there, and the K rate slightly suppressed at 21% to the lefties. So he's not going to walk anybody. He's going to throw it over the plate and make you hit it. He stays off the barrel, however, so full stacks make it a little di bit better difficult and frustrating sometimes against Lance Lynn, but uh, on a four-game slate, go ahead, do whatever you want. They've got guys here, Lamont Wade, Michael Conforto, Jock Peterson, Yaz, all of these all of these lefties can can really get to baseball in the air, so we'll see what they want to do with the lineup. Um, 
who knows, Gabe Kapler really screws around. They, they do so much platooning over here, it's very frustrating. So there is a little bit of pinch hit risk, in particular for a guy like Lamont Wade. But Conforto, Jock, uh, Yaz, pinch hit risk maybe a little bit, but probably stick to uh, the lefties here. Crawford's not going to come out of the game, you know what I mean? So um, he's still got a, bit, a little bit of lift in the bat from you know, from the left side at, at shortstop as well. So if you want to get to some cheaper pieces and very, I mean, off-the-board pieces here, uh, you can consider the Giants as well. Because Lance Lynn's certainly not immune. I do like him. Uh, would would like to get a healthy amount of him if I'm scripting and building a bunch of teams today. But, um, you know, at 40%, I think there's probably not a whole hell of a lot of ownership value to eke out of this. Uh, but there is a lot of strikeout upside just in general even these lefties, despite the fact that they can get the baseball in the air, they will strike out again. 24% ag aggregate K rate, as I mentioned, against lefties last, or excuse me, against righties last season. So, um, yeah, just kind of middle of the road for me on Lance Lynn here. Uh, I do like him and like playing him in general because I know he's going to throw a lot, but uh, not necessarily my favorite here today. Almost kind of prefer the Giants. All right, uh, well, this is the Miami and the Mets game that got canceled. So let's just get to the last game then here, and Washington and the Rockies. You got JoJo, we mentioned him, 6,200. I, I just don't think you can play him. Now, <laughs> let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. You could play him, okay? He's got a 24% strikeout rate, and it's really to both sides of the plate. Um, I don't think this is horrible if you want to, you know, just close your eyes, not watch the games, and, I don't know, just go to the bar or something. Like... It just maybe kiss the money goodbye. He has strikeout stuff, and the, and the Rockies still get a strikeout. Okay, it is only 55 degrees in uh, at Coors today, so it's reasonable that JoJo actually stays off the barrel. There's a little bit of variance with him because he can throw it by people a little bit with the slider and the curveball combination. The problem with him is he can't spot the four seamer. He is right in the middle of the plate with the fastball, and he's got a bad changeup. Doesn't use it a lot, admittedly, but he throws a sinker a little bit too, and those are just bad pitches for him. The four-seamer is awful. He's right on the barrel, 11%. This is one of the higher rates in the league for a starting pitcher. Can't throw strike one either, so he walks people, and he pitches to a hell of a lot of very hard contact. 269 average is you know, elevated. It's not the worst number you're going to see, but 418 Woba and a 334 ISO to lefties, it's just huge. 16% walk rate to them as well. So if you do want to minimize a little bit of the risk that you take by just uh, clicking in every single one of the Colorado lefties, in particular, a Ryan McMahon, Charlie Blackman, Moustakis, if he if he gets some, some ABs today, uh, something like that, there is risk in that department that he may just walk them and they might not be able to get to hit, get to, hit to baseball. But an 040 ground ball to fly ball, like on the barrel at Coors Field, the warm weather or not, this is a bad recipe. 3.4 homers per nine. Um, does induce a little bit of soft contact, which is intriguing, and would make him an okay target at 6,200 because he does have some strikeout upside, and the Rockies will strike out. So there's some hidden you know, run suppression here, as long as he can stay off the barrel. Every once in a while, JoJo will pop for a big number, and I, I do think that 6,200 is, is an intriguing price tag. doesn't mean I'm not going to be stacking against him, okay? But, um, you know, don't be shocked if the Rockies shit the bed here and it's somebody else that goes off and win turn, wins tournaments for you. JoJo does have a little bit there, and if he's at all spotting the four-seamer and maybe just on the, on the plus side of the... Um, uh, the batted ball metrics today in terms of getting soft contact, inducing it from both sides of the plate. I mean, these soft contact numbers are, are very strong, a couple of the highest numbers in the league. So he does have he does have some outs here to uh, not get blown apart. Um, now, that said, it, most often he is going to get blown apart. That 11% swinging strike rate, 28% CSW, it's just not going to play all that great at Coors Field when you're directly on a barrel. So um, like play the Rockies, play every one of them, doesn't matter who. Try to get contrarian with it because they're going to be, as I mentioned, upwards of 40% today. So 7,300 for Kyle Freeland on the mound for the Rocks. And 
I think he is another very interesting tournament piece that you could consider. Uh, once again, this isn't 95 degree weather at in the heart of the summer at Coors Field with the uh, with a wind blowing out or anything like that. Um, you know, so Kyle Kyle Freeland here, although he doesn't have any strikeouts, he's not going to blow it by these guys. And the Nats are a little bit sticky, certainly against lefties. Lane Thomas, Alex called Jamer, Joey Manessis. These guys don't strike out against lefties. So there's going to be some contact here for sure. But at 7,300, there's upside for him at this price to suppress and go up six innings or something deeper into the into the baseball game. He's got you know five full pitches here that he's using quite a bit. Four seamer sinker cutter mix with the slider change. None of them all that great. So changeup really not very good. Um, but he stays. Stays down in the strike zone, uh, to righties at, at least, and he's a little bit more of a fly ball or two lefties, as we see here, just a neutral ground ball to fly ball to lefties, and about a buck twenty-one ground ball to fly ball to righties. So he stays down, which neutralizes a bit of the negative changeup value that he sees. So um, it's reasonable. He pitches to a lot of contact, though, full eighty-one percent here, three hundred three average, two seventy average to lefties and righties respectively. Big power numbers to the left side of the plate, 1.7 homers per nine last season, and a 9.5% barrel rate himself. So, um, it, you know, there should be, in most scenarios, a hell of a lot of contact, a lot of balls in play today at Coors, but there are routes here for both of these pitchers to outperform a little bit because the lineups in general are not all that potent. Uh, but we've seen with guys that are just throw it over the plate and, and make you hit it and they're on the barrel – uh, it, definitely in the early part of the season here, particularly with the Rays against against Washington, um, they're just going to hit hit the baseball, and you know you just kind of got to play them, you know. So they're they're good plays here for a reason. They're going to be popular for a reason, but that doesn't mean that we uh, we just have to click into them uh, for that reason. So um, try and get different with it if you want to build some deep tournament teams with either JoJo or Kyle Freeland. Uh, these guys are not going to be owned here. If you want to run correlation stacks, Kyle Freeland, I think that's an okay construction today. Once again, just a four-game slate. So you can try and get different here. Uh, there are routes for both of these guys to stymie the stymie the uh, opponent here. So uh, that's really where we are in the breakdown, guys. Um, once again, enjoy the sort of getaway day four-gamer here. Uh, we will ha will have projections once again pushed to the site over the next couple hours as we get more data from the models. We've actually had lineups kind of rolling in here as we see. We've got something from the Royals so far, and we have uh, everything from Boston and Detroit. So um, I guess since we've got a little bit of time here, really no surprises in the in the Boston list. And here is Javi Baez is back in the lineup. Uh, for the Tigers today. So uh, really nothing surprising here either. Um, good prices over here on the, on the Tigers. So if you want to get to like an expensive Toronto with the Tigers or something, you can do that. If you want to play the expensive Colorado hitters uh, with some Tigers, you can do that. Uh, if you want to play some Boston here, we, we talked about this. This is a, a kind of an off-the-board stack a little bit, as will be... Uh, Chicago and the Giants definitely so all of these teams are really playable there are routes here mostly not for the Royals but I mean they got some good hitters Vinny 3600 down here pretty good price Michael Massey 2600 really good price so um, you know some some routes for pretty much every one of these teams to get there today uh, however very clearly favorite stacks are, are going to be the Rockies I do like the Nationals a little bit you can play uh, some of these righties over here um, and and get to like a maybe a stone Garrett he's got pop he's got speed if he is in the outfield uh, he's familiar a little bit with some Colorado pitching from his um, his early days in, in Arizona so uh, Victor Robles obviously plenty of speed CJ Abrams he played for uh, the Padres a little bit and before he came over to Washington, and he's got a little bit of speed. So these guys are cheap, and if you want to get to an expensive stack or an expensive expensive pitching on the mound, like a Lance Lynn, Kevin Gosman type of construction, you can play the Nationals. They won't be nearly as popular as the Rockies. So uh, definitely some ways to get different here today. 
Um, I, I think you can play and you can make a, a pretty decent case for everybody on the slate here. Um, as is general with uh, with baseball and four-game slates. So uh, that's it for today, guys. Um, good luck. We will be back tomorrow with a naturally large uh, Friday slate. Good luck.